Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. Uh, what a difference a day makes. I'll start with that. Uh, I've already moved one count out of view and moved it back to this. And again, I'm basing it on uh, the action that took place today. So I've rearranged the degree to put the primary B wave back here, the uh, intermediate wave one completing at the 11,921 low. This high was amazing, uh, but in an effort to try to keep things a little bit more contained, uh, the minute that number hit the tape, somebody pushed the buy button and it ran up to the high at 12,987. And I'm not kidding you that within two or three ticks, it was trading at 12,800. And then a few more ticks, it was just, it just absolutely sank uh, <clears throat> very, very quickly. So I have been in discussion. I'm going to go right down to the daily, uh, the hourly chart on this, by the way. And let me go to the four so I can look at the whole, the whole thing. I can open this up a little bit so we can get a chance to see it. So this was a very, very incredible move. Again, I had been discussing that where the positioning was, if it was going to complete, an intermediate wave two, throwing the market into an intermediate third wave down. How would that look? How would it kick off? What should I expect? And it did exactly what I was talking about. In fact, I said the market would be more inclined to drop just as it did off of this four, but it was time to turn and put in a fifth wave. And it did it basically in a much stronger fashion. But it was a very clear message that there was plenty more to come. Now, flip it up a degree. And that's where we're at. So I'm putting that count back on to reflect it. We need to now run Fibonacci's to put in an estimate or parameters around a an intermediate third wave. So I want to do that pretty much right now. And we're set up there. So I, what we do is we're just using, right. Let me see, I'm gonna make sure I get this right. I think it's actually that one. No, it's this one. There it is. And then up to today's high. It was amazing. Okay, so initially, intermediate third wave. Third waves are often under Elliott in his observations, the longest and the strongest out of waves one, three, and five. So overall, folks, what we're doing is we're on a primary C wave decline, right? There is, again, the high of primary B that tosses the market into a primary C wave decline. What is in that primary C wave? Five waves of intermediate degree. I'm showing you here so you can see how big that wave is. And now we're in the third, which should be longer and stronger. That is the observation by Elliot. We kicked off exactly in that fashion. So again, when, when I'm looking for an announcement that there's a turn and there's the confirmation, as I, I also discussed, how it would turn and break moving averages, just knock them out of the park down. Now I wanna drop this again to the hourly so I can look into here to what that actually looked like. If you can see hourly chart, we were everything pointing up. Prior to this number, everything was pointing up, including the 200s had we're angling higher with the SMA, finally angling higher and starting to move up. This is what one day and a strong move, this is what I'm talking about. It comes down and yes, it's 
pretty much a given it's going to break the four and the eight. Those are the shortest periods. But the 20 should have been a little bit of support. It whacked, smashed through it immediately. Then it hit the 50s, knocked them out. And But look what happened with the continued selling, which was very intense. They, they don't just arc and turn, they spike lower. They're spiking lower. And that tells you the power of the selling. So the trend, yes, has reverted. And that being the case, we now look for much lower levels. But again, inside this intermediate third wave, we're, we, we're looking for the completion point or an, a point that may complete minor wave one. So the overall now, we can take a look at the parameters of how the relationship between intermediate wave three and intermediate wave one comes to life or comes into the picture. So the most common would be that wave three will be 1.618 times the length of wave one. And that puts us down to 10,043. Is that possible? Yes. Yes, it is possible. Without doubt, it is possible. So what, in essence, is going to happen is that it is an intermediate. So we just are now still in minor wave one. So we have minor one, minor two, minor three, minor four, minor five. Bring it all the way down to there. For sure. So today we we clipped off over seven hundred. So it should it's not going to be that difficult to add a, another two grand to it. So again, this is the a little bit of a wider and a bigger view because there's going to be a ton of trading in between then and this where we are right now and down there, and we will rally, and we will drop strongly, and we will rally. But the, but the deal is, it's like we still have other things coming through. So just on a pure technical basis, I am saying that the market should have follow through to the downside. But intertwined within those will be bounces. So again, we are at a level, well, where at least the hourly chart is telling us, yeah, you should, we should put a bounce here. But we try, we don't get very far, and it just goes further. So we're kind of angling up off that bottom there. Uh, and that's this relative strength. And if we can kind of pick it up, maybe we get back to the four. But but the point is, is that the larger move, the decline, will always be hovering above any buying. So that buying has to have purpose. And so I'm going to leave it to that. It'll be very much related to uh, options trading as we work our way towards Friday, which is the September expiration cycle. So it's a monthly. So we, that's going to be going on intermittently. Plus tomorrow we have PPI. And then on Wednesday, I believe there's something else. And Thursday, we have jobless claims and a, and a number of other things as well. But today, the CPI stunned. It stunned people. The core went up way more than what even the street and the best of analysts thought. And again, as I often and will continue to say, Elliott Wave does not know what will cause it. I can tell you this is what I would expect based on my experience. Now, as you get your experience, or maybe you already have it, you're going to start putting it together just as I did. And we're not that far apart here, right? This move was on August 26th. This move that's not even that far, far in the future. It, this is on September 13th. So... We got more. And Friday could be another another kicker. Anyway, that for tomorrow, I do think we, we'll get a bounce in here. From what level, I'm not sure. 
what we have as far as support, we have support right here, 21, 12,113, and down to 12,073. That's kind of going to be a support zone because we've already been there. Um, and then when it starts to drop through there on price level, you might find some at like 11,970, 975. There are a couple of fibs that you probably can throw in there to tighten up the, the Fibonacci levels. Uh, but I think in terms of what we're looking at, I'm keeping my eye on them a little bit bigger <clears throat> picture, like the whole intermediate wave three. Uh, and then on the lower time frames, though, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, put together tighter fibs because you're working this structure versus the bigger structure, which we're also working. So again, back out to that hourly. For tomorrow, I'm looking for bounces. It's all going to be very tradable. Now, here's one thing I did not necessarily see today that I thought might have come into play a little bit stronger, that the, de the declines were very strong. They were very with purpose. And the buying was timid. And the buying didn't get very far before the next round of sellers just said, ah, we can't wait, boom. And they just came in and whacked again. So... Normally, when the volatility kicks up like it did today, I would be looking for both sides. So the buyers, if the sellers are done for that moment, and they're walked away, and the buyers just kind of flood in, and up it goes. But no, that's not what took place. It went up a little bit. and But there were a lot of components that were down very dramatically, and so I do would I do suspect because this then puts us into a, a folly mode. This was what was the purpose? There really wasn't any other than recovery. So that's why there was the selling with all this all the longs. Like no no that's it we're out reversing. So it'll slow. But in any case, I think that. We got to work with these. We got to work with the moving averages right now are pointing very hard down. Even the two hundreds on the hourly, the two hundreds turned. So it's it's a very significant drop today. Over in the S and P, it's the same story. <laughs> oh, excuse me, <clears throat> S and P thought hanging around four thousand was going to be the ticket. So it was a support level. And it ended up being a little bit stronger for, for an hour or so. But let me just flip out here to the daily and we'll take a peek because I've done the same thing here as I did in the NASDAQ. And that is revert back to the other count. Nice and neat. Took a lot of the, the noise out so now we can see it more clearly. It's an intermediate degree followed by the primary degree B. And now we're heading lower in a primary C wave which will consist of five waves of intermediate degree. And there's intermediate one, and we labeled intermediate two today. Those are the two, that was one of the two views that I've been following right off that high coming down. So I had discussed again, that this was a very, a very strong move in favor of that primary B being complete. This was bigger, so taking it up a degree, showing us two things. One, that of this of the degree of this decline that is now kicking in, as we now look on an intermediate degree, it is going to be stronger than the minor third. It's going to be 10 times. That's kind of the ratio that I'm using. And so the primary C wave decline is really going to be very strong. It's going to be 10 times that, which we got. So on this side, it's going to be, look, this is going to be even harder. And again, we have all of the fibs that go along with that. So let's start putting those back in. So here we are, one and a two. Now I want to start looking at what can we put together for that third wave. So we're going to use those, and I'm going up to this high, I believe. Yep. 
So put that there and put this here. 83, I thought this was. Yep. And then put it up here at today's high, 41.75. Well, that was, that's pretty wild considering that we closed under 4,000. It was, yeah, quite the move. Yeah, here we go. So they're opening up nothing too great. People that just needed to get flat or whatever. So for this intermediate third wave, that's what I'm just measuring out right now. We have pretty much that 1.618, 3456. That's where I think intermediate wave three completes. Remember, we're in a primary C wave decline. The market is not giving us any indications that that is shifted again. So I'm looking for continued follow through, but here we go. We will have a bounce. That's the level that will work towards an intermediate third. And then we get an intermediate fourth and an intermediate fifth. And if you remember, ultimately, I'm going to go out to the weekly chart for a second. I'm looking for a move down into this zone, the previous fourth wave. So into this zone, but ultimately could take us as low as 2170. Could, could, could. I have <clears throat> also can put fibs, which are going to show the larger C wave. And those actually can come down within to this zone, All right? That's 21, and I get start to get them here. Wave C would be equal to wave A at 31.58. That would be a minimum. And then we have additional all the way down to that 24.35, and then ultimately we have that low. So it does all fit on this primary C wave. And now I'm hoping people realize it's like, it's not that you make things up, but it is not difficult to start to go like, well, inflation has, there's nothing. There's nothing that shows any change. We've not got any evidence. And today we got evidence that it's worse on a consumer level. So yes, everybody wants to say, but look, crude prices are coming down. It's like, yeah, but far more people eat food than eat, than drive cars. So that's all I got to tell you. Or they eat more than they put in gas in their cars. So that's going to come first. And it, the prices went up more than they expected. In any case, that's all real. Now, what can we look for? Well, the weekly shows us we can come all the way down to here and even a little bit further. That's just on a an intermediate wave three. Okay. Internally, or just shorter term, I am looking for continuation to the downside. We have the, yeah, this is going to be 475. That's correct. For this intermediate wave three. And so we, intermediate wave three can come all the way down to 3731. Didn't I say that? 36, but actually I said 3456. Minimum, minimum, minimum would be 3731. And they might find some stronger support there, but I, I don't think it'll last. In fact, it might just be one of these internals and it'll come down and rest and then go and then continue to fall. All right, so for tomorrow, I think on a very short-term basis, I'm still going to look for more downside. We have the PPI in the morning before the market opens. If it comes out with any type of a hint, the producer prices have not softened any in terms of the inflation there has not softened any then I think that we could take another tumble. So very little to follow once we start to drop. Intraday on your shorter time frames, you can always use um, a volume profile and or an order flow volume profile and get points of control and, and value area high and lows because they do shift around, but you're at least finding a mean and the market Hopefully it will travel to the mean, but if it's going to start dropping in larger standard deviation, so you know if it's another deviation down, another you know whole point down, um, 
you would be looking for the reaction that the market, when it decides to bounce, should be just as fast and quick. Again, today it didn't happen in the S&P also. Uh, but when the selling got intense, it didn't stop. Now, the NASDAQ already has turned and now they're, you know, so they're going to go through this whole rigmarole. So both sides are going to be in play. I think the overwhelming trend is down or the overriding trend is down. It made me feel overwhelming. So beware, but bounces are necessary. We're getting oversold. But again, this is another time when I'm going to say markets can continue to go down strongly when they're oversold. Hourly is oversold. I'm sure the four hours oversold. Eh, not quite, but it's getting there. The daily so the, you know the, we, the daily has all the most room in terms of go down. So the hourly chart can stay oversold while the daily and the four hour catch up. So that's what we're talking about. And if you're using a five minute chart, yeah, be prepared. It's going to stay oversold. So don't be looking for it to buy a bounce and thinking that you're going to make some money, even though it's not a bad thought. So following the price action is sellers need to get out and they're the ones looking for where can they find value? Where would the buyer step in? And that is the name of the game right now. All right. I'm going to wrap it up right here. Keep this on the short leash. Um, we will see what happens tomorrow. And again, trade wisely, trade using your own rules always do have a stop in and uh, attempt to trade without a directional bias. Trade the numbers, trade the price action. Our next update will be on Wednesday, the 14th.